Thank you. Thank you. Folks, it's serious. It's real. And it's here right now. Our beloved country is in the middle of a crisis. It's an overwhelming crisis. It has two components. The first is this global security crisis. I believe the world is more dangerous than at any other time in my lifetime. And interlocked with that global security crisis is our own federal debt crisis, which today threatens our very ability to fund our military and defend our country. Today, after we spend all of our tax revenue on mandatory expenses like Social Security and Medicare, and those are all necessary, but after we spend all of that, there's nothing left. Every dime that is spent on foreign aid, every dime that's spent on our military is borrowed. Ladies and gentlemen, we are indeed at a moment of crisis in America. Well, how'd we get here? And where, what do we do about it? Well, in the last 100 years, we've had three Democratic supermajorities. The first gave us a new deal. The second gave us a great society. The third, Obamacare and Dodd-Frank. And I'm just a business guy, but I would argue that most of the responsibility for this financial catastrophe can be laid at the feet of those three supermajorities. And yet the irony is that the very people that they claim to champion, the working middle class and working poor, they have failed them. Today, for example, poverty is exactly the same as it was in 1965 when the Great Society and the War on Poverty started. Poverty today is the same rate. These sweeping liberal progressive policies have failed. And as a conservative, I'm outraged by that because they still get to champion the working middle class and the working poor. To me, <clears throat> it's not that complicated. But people are still hurting out there in America. I hear it all the time. I'm new to this. But I hear that over and over. It's now no longer good enough to just talk about liberalism and conservatism. Because of this vein of disenfranchised people out there, I believe that it's now the political class in Washington versus everybody else, you, me, everybody back home. Look, we can solve this. But it's finally time that we honestly have an open and straightforward debate in Congress about bringing term limits to the United States Congress. We can fix this. <clears throat> These complicated problems are not so complicated that we can't solve them. We can absolutely fix this budget. It's only worked four times in the last 40 years. You think any business could survive doing that? No. It's what creates this problem. We can absolutely get rid of these redundant agencies. The General Accounting Office estimates that that's about $400 billion. We need to get our economy growing and get people back to work. It's not that hard to do. If we would just revise these archaic and out-of-date and non-competitive tax laws, if we would push back on regulatory agencies that are overburdening small businesses, and if we would once and for all take advantage and develop a plan of these God-given resources that God's blessed us with, we can get this economy going. We can absolutely save Social Security and Medicare. We have to for the people who need it the most. The problem is both of those trust funds are literally out of money in less than 15 years. Their trust funds go to zero. We can actually absolutely get this economy going again. The next thing is we have to get at the underlying cost of our health care system. Throw Obamacare out, put a new replacement plan in, and let's get at the spiraling cost of health care. But before we do all of that, honestly, I think we've got to do one thing, and it's a, it, it may be the hardest thing to do. We've got to turn our country. We've got to return to the founding principles of our founding mothers and our founding fathers. Economic opportunity, limited government, individual liberty, fiscal responsibility, faith in God. Ronald Reagan once said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We don't pass it down in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and passed on so they can do the same. Or one day in our sunset years, we'll be telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in America when women and men were free. Not on my watch. That's why I got involved. 
Not on your watch. That's why you're here. The stakes are too high for us to not to make a difference right now for our country. No matter who your presidential candidate is, no matter who our nominee is, we cannot allow Hillary Rodham Clinton one more night in our White House. Thank you for what you do. God bless you and God bless the United States of America. Thank you.